This is a very simplified version of the TMJ model. It shows the upper jaw with the teeth. It shows the temporal bone here with the fossa, as we talked about, the glenoid fossa here. It shows the lower jaw and the condyle of the jaw. Now look at these white lines. When teeth are together in a normal position, the condyle is separated from the glenoid fo fossa by that disc that I mentioned. The yellow represents the disc. And the condyle, when it's fully seated, is in this position between the... Uh, it, it's in, <clears throat> the condyle, when fully seated, is separated by the glenoid fossa surface by the disc. When we open and close a little bit, the condyle rotates on the bottom of that disc in this fashion. But when we open our mouth wider, as in when we laugh wider or when we yawn, first it rotates and then this whole assembly starts to move forward. That's how we open our mouth. If you notice, in this healthy situation, the disc, which is represented by that yellow piece of plastic here, moves with the condyle forward. And then when we close, it moves back with the condyle and then allows the rotation until the teeth come together. This is normal. These people don't usually do not come in the office claiming that they have TMJ. Now, some people who have clicking, now the clicking to talk about the different clicking is beyond the scope of this video. There are various situations that the clicking can occur. But invariably, the clicking is when this disc does not move along with the condyle smoothly. So either the disc will stay put. When you open and close a little bit, the disc is fine. But there is adhesion between the disc and the glenoid fossa. And when you open wider, this jaw will click over it and the disc doesn't come. And then as you close, it has to click back in and then close. Or the disc can come forward and then towards the middle, that doesn't follow anymore. And then the jaw clicks over it and then clicks back on. Or it comes forward and then it sticks here and then the jaw goes just back and the disc has to catch up with it. Now this is an oversimplified version of what is going on. In the body, this is a three-dimensional situation. The disc doesn't move back and forth. The disc comes forward and to the, to the right and any of those situations or a combination of them happens when people have some kind of TMJ problem and the disc uh, does not follow the condyle smoothly as it should. So that's how clicking occurs. And as you can see, this can happen on both sides or it can happen on uh, one side more than the other. And uh, that's basically clicking. The very important question, the very important question is, <clears throat> does the clicking need to be treated? Now that's very important. The answer is absolutely not. Just because the disc does not follow the condyle, if you're asymptomatic, if you don't have any pain or discomfort, you should not attempt any kind of treatment for that. Now, of course, when you have clicking, that means at one point, some kind of stress or trauma or derangement has taken place in your joint. And of course, you must be gentle with the joint from this point on and not put too much stress on it so that it doesn't get worse. But the clicking alone, in absence of other symptoms, must be just ignored and just treated as a little warning that the joint is under some kind of stress or has been under some kind of stress. So you may ask, well, how do I reduce the damage and how I'm careful so that it doesn't get worse. Well, the first thing your dentist recommends to you is to limit the use of joint for what is meant to be used. Now we always say 
the function of the teeth and obviously the joint that connects upper and lower teeth together are speech, aesthetics, and mastication. Now, aesthetics, just for the teeth to be there, be white and, you know, be lined up, that's the aesthetic of the teeth. For uh, speech, for if the teeth are in the right position and most of the teeth are present, we can articulate various letters and that will, uh, uh, the teeth will uh, serve their function. Their function for mastication, if the teeth are again lined up and the movement of the jaw allows the teeth to perform what they're supposed to form in terms of incising the food, churning the food, and making the food into a palatable bolus, then they're doing their job. Now, if you pay attention, all of, for the aesthetics, there is no demand on the joint. It's just there, it's pretty. You smile, you're pulling your lip muscles back, but there is no uh, demand or labor on the joint. For speech, the labor on the joint is very minimal. Okay, it's just up and up, uh, opening and closing the jaw to some degree, and that's it. It's really not stressful for the joint for someone to talk. Eating, it could be a little stressful, but if you're just using your teeth and joint for eating your food, you're talking about maybe 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, half an hour uh, for lunch or the other way around. At the most, you will be chewing your food for an hour for most people. Now, busy people these days, they finish their meal in three minutes, four minutes, so we're talking 15 minutes tops for all the chewing they do. But let's say that you use your teeth for chewing for about an hour and you're chewing food, which is usually cooked and soft and doesn't really take that much force. Why I'm saying all this? Because if you use your teeth and enjoy it only for chewing your food, you most likely will not have TMJ problem. You will, you will not be putting too much stress in a normal individual on this joint. Now, the only condition that is very common and you can definitely stress your joint and definitely put a lot of uh, wear and tear on your joint is when you grind your teeth. Now most people know grinding is necessarily not good for the teeth and during the day they're, if they find themselves grinding they can part their teeth and not grind. It's the nocturnal grinding or bruxism that causes the most damage to the joint. You can be bruxing your teeth 20 minutes out of every two hour of sleep cycle and for an eight hour average sleep that'll be like three hours three hours of severe stress now remember when you don't have the food in between the teeth you don't have a goal for grinding your teeth you grind those teeth as hard as those muscles let you and for that duration three hours as opposed to the normal use which is about an hour you're subjecting your joint to three to four times more wear and tear than nature made this joint to withstand. So how do you damage your joint? By grinding your teeth. Grinding the teeth at night potentially can damage your joint because it's putting severe wear and tear three to four times more than what the nature uh, meant this joint to take. And that's how discs get deranged, discs get perforated, discs get displaced, and then you'll start having clicking in your joint. You may have pain. Now you may ask, what is the, how is it that I will have pain if that disc is moving around? That'll be for the next section.